Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1969 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup features the Washington Senators versus the Seattle Pilots at Six Stadium. On the mound for the Senators today is Mike Thompson, who's making his first start of the season. And pitching for the Pilots today is John Gelnar, whose record is 7-1 with a 382 ERA. Okay, we wrapped up the month of August uh, just a couple of days ago. Uh, we took a day off, and in that day off, we recapped uh, the standings, league leaders, and September call-ups, uh, the players that will be a part of our team here going forward for the next 30 days. And if you haven't seen that video, um, I will post it at the end of this video so you can check it out uh, if you want to see who the top uh, players are in all the statistical categories uh we still are three games out with these last what is it 27 games to go and so uh 20 29 games to go i'm not sure i'm not good at math uh but we're on the home stretch and being three games back we certainly have a uh, fighter shot at uh, winning this division but we're gonna have to do it uh by winning a lot of games on the road we have uh, as you can see right here, we have our last game today versus the Senators, and we're facing a pitcher who's a September call-up, so maybe we have a shot there. And then we go on the road for nine consecutive games, and we play the Yankees, Indians, and Red Sox. Uh, the Yankees and Indians are good. Red Sox are not so good. Uh, we come back home to play the Tigers, which are an average team. We'll see the Senators again on the road. Uh, then we'll finish it up against the Yankees, Twins, and finally the first place Orioles. That's what, what it might actually come down to. So uh, that should be fun. Um, let's go ahead and get the final, uh, the, I should say, the yeah, final game of the series versus the Senators uh, started right here. So uh, in addition to the series, you probably know that we have the 1984 Detroit Tigers season replay coming up uh, yesterday. We did the final division preview. We did the American, Le I'm sorry, the National League West preview. Um, it's a, I don't know how every video got longer and longer. It's a pretty long video, but very comprehensive of, of the six teams that are in the National League West. Um, I have now completed doing the um, stadium effects. All the photos are in. Uh, we have everything set up for... Um, for example, like I, I like to make sure that all the uh, players' uh, races are um, represented properly. Um, so if you know their skin tone is the proper skin tone for them, I try to make it as realistic as possible every time I start a new sim. And so uh, everything is complete. We are now at the beginning stage of uh, the off of uh, the off season um, spring training. And so I think later today. I am going to do the month of March spring training where all you have to do in that is just advance one day at a time. But why that's important is there could be trades, there could be players getting injured, um, and rosters might switch up a little bit. And so uh, we will go ahead and, and do that as a separate video uh, just because I think it might be fun to see um, you know, who makes the team for uh, our Tigers team up for grab and that is the final um, uh, bullpen long relief roll so uh, anyway um, that will come up later on today if you are interested so we have John Gelnar on the mound as you can see here uh, he is uh, has never faced the Senators uh, John Morris and Dick Bates will not be available today um, they pitched in long relief in yesterday's game but we do have uh, Edgerton, Gary Timberlake. Uh, well, you know what? I'm not going to use... Oh, I can't remember now. Let me look. Yeah, uh, no. So G Gary Timberlake will not be available today. Um, but we'll have the rest of our bullpen. Uh, Timberlake and Dennis Leonard are players who are, yes, on our roster. But we will not be using them, um, as I mentioned in yesterday's video. Okay, and then here is our lineup versus Mike Thompson. He is making the first start of the season. He's got two relief appearances uh, for the Senators from way back in April. 
and uh, we try to get as many of our good guys in there. And you can see our very long be <laughs> bench of hitters. Um, and who knows, some of them might come into play uh, today, so we'll see. Okay, let's go ahead and do the lineup rundown for the Washington Senators. Batting leadoff, playing third base is Lenny Randall. Batting second at shortstop is Toby Harrow. Batting third at first base is Mike Epstein. Batting cleanup playing left field is Frank Howard. Batting fifth and catching is Jim French. Batting sixth and right field is Sam Bowens. Batting seventh and center field is Del Unser. Batting eighth at second base is Bernie Allen. And batting ninth is the pitcher Thompson. Doesn't look like they have any um, minor leaguers, uh, September call-ups in the, in the lineup today. Okay, here's John Gelnar, and he is making his 14th start. He's our number five starter in our rotation. Um, he's sort of tailed off a little bit here as we've watched his uh, ERA balloon to 382. He's 7 and 1 with that 382 ERA, 56 strikeouts, and 75 and a third innings pitched. Opponents are betting 271 against him. Fastball topping out at 91 miles an hour. Uh, that is his best pitch, really his only pitch, fastball. Rated in 85. Overall, 76. The 26-year-old ready is arbitration eligible in 1971. Looking at his log, he hasn't gone six innings in his last five starts. Um, he struck out five against Oakland in four and a third. We had to pull him out of there, though, because he was giving up so many hits, um, and we were trying to preserve that victory, which we did actually win. Um, so that turned out to be a good decision. And we can do that the rest of the way this season. We have so many good bullpen options that we don't have to put up with a, a pitcher who can't get through five. Okay, uh, here's the defense today for the Pilots. Uh, we have Sutherland at second base, below league average. And, of course, we have McNerty behind the plate um, at a 77 rating. Here we go with uh, Lenny Randall. Back at his normal position, third base. He played first base in game one of the series. He flips it out to left field for a base hit. And the Senators are on the base paths here. Let's see if we can maybe get a double play. Toby Harris is betting, betting only 135 versus righties. Randall's going and he steals second base. This is going to feel like it's the seventh stolen base of the year. This is going to feel like a missed opportunity if we lose two games at home to the Senators. With all these opportunities to um, capitalize and move up and get closer to Oakland. Hera grounds out to short. Patek tossing him out. There's one down. That will bring up Mike Epstein. Batting 253, 17 home runs and striking out on a pitch that was way out of the zone. Two outs for Frank Howard. I have a feeling he's going to walk here. No, 0-2 oh, count to Howard. And he flips it into center field. That'll fall in. Oh, no, it's going to be caught. Oh, yes, we got a, we got a Bosch out. Oh, no, it's A.G. in center field. Oh, my bad. I thought I stuck Bosch out there, but A.G. getting the job done. Okay, so we managed to keep him off the board. Let's take a look at the Pilots' lineup rundown for today's ballgame. Batting leadoff, playing shortstop is Freddy Patek. Batting second, playing first. Oh my gosh. I feel like after taking a day off, I'm a little off my game today. We'll get it together here momentarily. Batting second, playing first base is Mike Hegan. Batting third in right field is Joe Pepitone. Batting cleanup, playing center field is Tommy Agee. Batting fifth in left field is Lou Pinella. Batting sixth at third base is Rich Rollins. Batting seventh and catching is Jerry McNertney. Batting eighth at second base is Gary Sutherland. And batting ninth is the pitcher, uh, John Gelnar. Okay, here we go. Taking a look at Mike Thompson. So it looks like he, he's, well, he's a 19-year-old. Uh, he did make one relief appearance, throwing two innings. So he's making his first start, uh, first career start for the Senators. And you can see the line there. If you take a look, you see they pulled him up from single A ball 
where he was 12 and 3 with a 2.41 ERA, 105 strikeouts in 123 and a third innings pitched. Opponents are betting 235 against him. His fastball tops out at 95 miles an hour. He's a ground ball pitcher. Uh, 40% of the time he throws the ground ball. He's got two pitches. Both are pretty solid. A fastball rated in 84 and a changeup rated in 81. Overall, he is at rated in 84. The 19-year-old righty is arbitration eligible in 1972. Okay, let's take a look here at the defense for the Senators. Uh, the only below league average player is Bowens out in right field. Okay. Freddie Pontek leading off against Mike Thompson. Let's get on the board. Let's hurt this youngster. A ground ball to third, and Pontek is out. I wonder if this, because it's his first start, I wonder if this is going to be one of those complete game, three hitters, shutout kind of performances. The game will do that from time to time. Well, I guess there's the answer to that. As Mike Keegan hits his ninth home run of the season, 439 feet to right field, and it's 1-0 Seattle. That makes me feel instantly better. Pepitone dumping it into left center field. Back-to-back -back hits now for the Pilots. Pepitone on first. Here is Tommy A.G. A.G. batting 234, 21 home runs. First pitch swinging, ground ball to second. And that's a double play. A.G. doesn't hit into, into uh, too many double plays. But that will end the inning. We get on the board with the Hegan home run. Go to the top of the second with Jim French leading off. French betting 201 versus righties. And Gelnar walks in promptly. So the leadoff man is on again. Hmm. Pardon me. Needed a little uh, Java there. Maybe that's my problem. I haven't had enough coffee yet today. Bowens will get a hit to the right. And, yeah, so we kind of see how this is going. We'll pull the infield in. It's kind of early in the game to do something like that, but we need to try to preserve every run we possibly can. And a base hit, so there was never anything we were going to do to stop it. We'll pull it in again. It's all tied at one. There's a ground ball to Keegan at first. He steps on the bag for one out. So he didn't go home. He didn't try to turn two. All he did was go to first. So maybe the hit and run was on for Unser. Uh, the pitcher's up. So we'll definitely pull the infield in here. First pitch. Oh, he's going to lay down a bunt anyway. Good job by the pitcher. I like that call. It's two to one Senators. On the sacrifice. I mean, that's something I would have done. So I can't be mad at the game for doing that. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a smart move, really. And then Lenny Randall flies out to center field. So the Senators get on the board. They score two. They have the lead with Lou Pinella leading off. It's Pinella, Rollins, and McNertney. So now my next fear is that that was our only run we were going to get today. Will we even get another hit? Rollins grounding out to third. And Victor e. walking. There we go. McNerty always finds a way to get on base. Here's Gary Sutherland. We've been sitting him a lot lately because his average dropped down from 325 to 307. He doesn't hit righty as well, um, and he's not hitting at all because like, I think the game is definitely trying to get his average back to the what would be normal for Gary Sutherland. He does get a hit there, um, coincidentally with the pitcher coming up, so it doesn't matter anyway. Here's Gelnar. He's a 174 hitting pitcher. That's solid. Can that get down? No, it would fly out the center field. Well, at least we had a couple guys get on base. I don't have much more hope than that right now. So there's the third base hit on a duck snort 
and that is the third time this game the Senators have had the leadoff guy on. So, I mean, these are all the telltale signs of a sure loss. And there's the nail in the coffin. That's the ball game right there. Epstein hits the home run. It's four to one, and now we're just we're pushing buttons. And yeah, that's fine. We'll just get it over with. Now, I have a dilemma, and I haven't really figured out what to do. Because uh, Baseball Mogul 2023 comes out today. I haven't bought it yet. I will buy it. Um, but the problem is that <laughs> Gilner's given up his seventh hit. This is such bullshit. Um, the, the problem is that whenever you port the new version with your old game, it will change a lot of your ratings for your players. And so I'm afraid that if I, if I were to do that for the start of a new season, like the Tigers coming up, that would be fine. I wouldn't have a problem doing that. But we're in the middle of playing this sim season here, and I don't want the ratings to get, to get changed. I think the photos will port over. Um, but, I, you know, like, I would probably have to go in and do all the uh, stadium effect ratings for the Tigers 84 series as well. So these are things I'm not looking forward to. And it takes a lot of time to uh, fix all the things that this game screws up. So I, I don't know if it's worth it to start to, to, to buy the game and screw up the pilot season in order to make the Tigers season whole. You know what I mean? So I, I'm kind of on the fence of what I should do. Uh, the, the fucking pitcher gets a hit. I mean... This game sucks so bad. I can't believe I'm going to spend another $35 on this bullshit game. Oh, we'll bring in Dick Bainey here because the game's over anyway. Um, this game sucks so bad. I'm so concerned that I'm going to spend $35 on a game that is still incredibly fucked up. Uh, that is something that really, really concerns me. It's not about the $35. I could care less about the money. It's just, uh, you know, you're basically paying for a, a turd in a box, you know. And um, that's ridiculous. And so, I don't know. Good job by Danny, though. You go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Yeah, I mean... That's, this is another example of why this game is so shitty. Here is a Mike Thompson, a pitcher who's never made a start in the majors, and he's pitching like Greg Maddox. Our only shot was the first inning, and we couldn't get it done. There's a one other one, two, three inning. We haven't had a hit since the second. And an error. There we go. The only way we can turn a double play is with Frank Howard and the catcher running. Otherwise, anybody else, that would not have been a double play. It wouldn't have even been possible. Bottom of the fifth. Let's get this game over with. McNerdy with a hit. He's got a hit in the walk today. Got to give him some credit. Oh, talk about double plays. Oh. I guess not. I guess we won't talk about double plays. Oh, man. Bosch pinch hitting. Well, who are we going to bring in now? Let's see. We've got a couple lefties coming up. Let's give Bill Edgerton his very first appearance. Has he ever pitched before? Yeah, I guess he has. Back when the A's were in Kansas City. And he pitched really well. His ratings aren't so good. Let's talk about him real quick. 
Uh, so he was in AAA this year. He's 99 with a 404 ERA, all in relief. That's not great. Um, he's given up more hits than innings pitched. 70 strikeouts in 127 innings pitched. Uh, 268 batting average against. Uh, his fastball tops out at 90. He's a one-pitch pitcher with the fastball rated at 81. Overall, 74. The 28-year-old left-hander is arbitration eligible in 1972. Well, let's see if you can get some guys out. There's one. Nope, can't get lefties out back to back. Here's the pitcher. Um, bring the corners in in case he lays down a bunt. He does. Another one back to the pitcher. Lenny Randall. Flying out. Yeah, I mean, whenever the game is over in the first inning, like, that is something that really is disappointing. Um, I, I, I hate that feeling because we've played so many games, I've played so many games, that you know when, you know, the indicator is, uh, it's the 13th double for Hegan. Uh, you know, like, you know that that's the final nail in the coffin as Pepitone gets Hegan to third. We'll try to get a sack fly. Hegan does have good speed for a first baseman. Oh, instead he pounds it into the dirt. And it's an error in a run scores. So we couldn't even get a RBI. The game wouldn't even give us that. Wait, why is it 60? Oh, it's French, that's why. It's French. All right, we'll hit and run with Pinella. Yeah, no chance. That will get Ag to third. Rollins will get a gapper. Ag will score. It's four to three. Rollins is getting himself another double. That is his 14th. Okay, well, we have a runner in scoring position opportunity to tie it up. McNerky's one for one today. Are we finally getting to Thompson? Or is this the game just tickling our balls? There's a ball tickler. Should have known. On to the seventh. Um, okay. Good job by Edgerton in his pilot's debut. Um, well, now. <laughs> I mean, the next pitcher I would have brought in would have been Cupid Doll, uh, who's terrible, but we are kind of in the ball game, right? I think we need to take it seriously, even if the game already has told us it's over. So, yeah, we're going to bring in Diego Sigui. He has pitched the most innings of any of our relievers. And he's not good. Uh, what a surprise, another leadoff man on. Fantastic job game. And then another one. It's the fourth one that falls in that I've been keeping track of anyway. So, yeah, they, that was a little ball tickler. Two, two runs last inning. There's, there's no chance here. That was, uh, that was to try to get our hopes up a little bit. We will intentionally walk French, even though he's a 199 hitter to get to the slugger Bowens. Um, and that way we can get a force out at any base. It's our only chance of getting out of this. If he gets a grand slam, he gets a grand slam. It was always going to happen. A fly ball to left. Will Hera be able to tag on that? Yep. And then a base up the middle, so. All right, we're back to getting, getting through the game. Jerry Sutherland. There we 
Take out Siggy. Um, all right. Uh, I guess we need somebody who can hit a home run. So we're going to pinch hit Darren Johnson here. He wasn't listed as tired. We were just trying to give him a day off. He walks. Freddie Podtek would be awesome if he could hit a three-run home run here. But uh, instead, we will... Do we bunt and play small ball? Will the game even let us? It did, well, that works. Okay. Um, we're going to go on contact. They're playing back. Mike Keegan does strike out a lot. He does have a home run today as well. Ground ball to second. That'll get Sutherland home. It's 6-4. to four. And Joey Pep walks. Thompson's officially tired. And we've got the man up that we want up. I mean, AG could go any possible direction here. Uh, he could hit a three-run home run, but he also could just strike out in three pitches. Oh, no, five pitches. The old tickle in the undercarriage. Um, let's see here. Well, now we could definitely bring in Bruce Brubaker. There he is, the human Cupid doll. Whoa. Maybe sending him to the minors did some good. Striking out Lenny Randall. And a line drive to Hegan. Trying to get that 10 ERA down. Full count to Epstein. And he strikes him out. Whoa. There's the player of the game right there. Uh, they're going to bring out Mike Thompson in his major league <laughs> debut start. Uh, who's pitched 116 innings. He has the lead. And he's tired. And they're going to go ahead and just throw him out there. It won't make a difference in getting hits. The game, won't, the game doesn't even recognize its own strategy. We should be tearing this guy's ass up, but there's nothing we can do. Rollins might get another double, though. That's the second one today. Uh, his 15th on the season. McNertney. Let's see what happens. He's up to 128 pitches. Uh, will they walk Sutherland to get to the pitcher? No, nope. 2-1. Yeah. This game is so stupid. It doesn't even play within its own rules. Well, all we can hope for is that Oakland uh, doesn't lose. I mean, doesn't win. If Oakland loses, as they're, I think they're three and seven in their last 10, 3Ks for Brubaker. Holy shit! That's four strikeouts in two innings for Brubaker. That is kind of amazing. I think we have to give him player of the game. Got the um, Daryl Knowles, who I believe is their closer. Uh, who hits lefties on our bench? Let's take a look here. Who, oh, we got man, we got so many to choose from. Um, I guess we have to be smart and at least give it to Bill Robinson. Oh, you know we have Danny Walton back up. You know what? Let's give it to Danny Walton. Walton's got power. He's been in the minors for a while, for a long time. We'll take a look at him here. So yeah, he he just he's not good defensively. There was no spot. For him on the team as we were trying to build our outfield. So we set him down. 3-1 count. And he walks in his first plate appearance. Back. Good job by him. All right. Uh, here is Freddie Patek. We're going to let him swing away. And there's a double play. And an error. Oh, my gosh. Toby Harrop 
I mean, he's really a third baseman, but he's able to play shortstop here, I guess. Well, there's no way in hell we're letting Mike Keegan bat. Uh, so now we have to decide. Oh, now it's definitely going to be Bill Robinson. I mean, I have to trust that he has the ability to um, get the ball in play. Now, um, you know, this could be the junk run inning as well, where we always fall and run short. Um, I forgot. Uh, Freddie's got a name for it. I already forgot what it was. Junks something. I'm not sure. All right. Well, Robinson walks. And that'll bring up Joey Pepitone, who's also a lefty. Now we're going even deeper on the bench. Um... Wayne Comer, welcome back. He's got now Wayne Comer. He has one of the best ratings on the team. He's got an 80 rating. Again, another player that doesn't have any spot on the roster. He could play anywhere in the outfield. He'd be a great fourth outfielder. But we have Bill Robinson. We have our two first basemen, Pepitone and Hegan, that can play the outfield. Um, doesn't have any power, but. I think he can put the ball in play. We will be going on contact here. Oh, obviously his bases were loaded. There we go. Two one count. Oh god, right in front of the home plate. And another error. Holy shit, this game sucks. That's five errors. The bases are loaded. There's nobody out, and we're down to run, and it's Tommy Ag. We have a speedster on third. Give me a sack fly. Show me a sack. I hit the button. There we go. Oh, one count. And a ground ball to short putt deck. Ties it up. Oh, my God. We can walk it off, and we have the right guy up. Lou Pinella, this is a hit and run situation. We have speed on first. We have good speed at third. Put the ball in play. How come they're not pulling the infield in with the game on the line? Well, we might actually be able to pull this one out against Daryl Knowles. All these runs are unearned, so it's not hurting his ERA. This game's so dumb. Round ball to third. Robinson going home, and we win the ball game. Seven to six. What a miracle victory. After I poo-pooed it all the way through, we managed to come back and win. And we'll take it. Handshakes, butt slaps, sloppy steaks. Um, wow, okay. We won seven to six. I mean, you don't even have to try. <laughs> you still win. We threw in Brubaker. Brubaker's the player of the game. Uh, absolutely. If he hadn't pitched those two scoreless innings, we would probably um, be in real trouble. Um, oh, here's the National League first, for some reason. Los Angeles has won six in a row, and they're a half game back. And uh, we are two games back! Oh my gosh, we are so close! Every win is so important. They're two and eight. Um, and we have 100... Uh, Home runs on the season now, which is kind of nice. Uh, Baltimore is uh, still four games up on... Well, everybody lost in that division except for Detroit. Well, now we're going to play the Yankees. They're on a two-game winning streak. And we're playing at Yankee Stadium, so that's going to be tough. We're going to have to bring out all the big guns. Let's take a look at the headline news. Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. Let's see here. Royals win as Bunker throws a three-hitter. Okay, nobody cares about the Royals. Wright permits just one hit. We just won a ball game to get within two games, and, like, they can't even give us a blurb. Transactions. Okay, uh, yes, we know about Willie Mays' 600th home run, and then we know that the Baltimore pitcher, uh, I'm sorry, first baseman Jim Campbell is going to miss three weeks. We need to check. We're, we're going to check Baltimore's lineup and see who they replaced him with. 
And Tony Cloninger is done for the year on the Reds. Another major injury. He'll be ready for spring training. Let's look at Baltimore real quick. Let's take a look at their lineup. Okay. So who's playing first base now? Oh, so they did it. They, they, this is going to make Julio very happy. Julio L. Um, they put Brooks Robinson at first base, which is what they should have done anyway. Um, or you should have Brooks at third and put Ron Santo at first. I'd be okay with that too. I'm sure, I'm sure Julio would be that way uh, as well. So, uh, well, there's their long bench of players. Um, uh, this is versus lefties. I'm sorry. There we go. So that's everybody. If, if Julio wants to look, we'll give Julio a chance to look at the pitching. Why not? We like to do little favors. So, yeah, they brought up somebody named Ed Barnowski as a September call-up to, to pitch. Because Tom Phoebus is injured for another eight days. So he'll be back. Okay, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. A nice surprise victory. I mean, I did not think that we were going to come back, obviously, because I was pissy about it and bitching and moaning and swearing and saying things like undercarriage. Um, but, you know, sometimes you got to do that. you got to let it out. Uh, okay, player of the game, we're going to give it to Brubaker, who gets his second win. He pitched two perfect innings, striking out four to get his ERA down to eight. I mean, that's pretty damn amazing. All those runs against Daryl Knowles were unearned. They actually, we only had two earned runs this ballgame. Uh, Mike Keegan did hit the home run. And, uh, yeah, that was, wait, 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 wait. Was that final run scored on an error? Not an RBI? From Luke? We got to look that up. Wait, so we right click on this and pull up the play by play. And let's go to the bottom. Lou Pinella reached second on a throwing error by the third baseman. That's how the run scored. So, not Toby Hara, uh, Lenny, um, what's his face? Uh, what is his name? Um, Lenny Randall. There you go. So, that's how we won that game. It was actually on a throwing error. There were two errors in the fourth inning. That is redonkulous. That's embarrassing. Let's pull up the box score and get out of here. This game, I, 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 I've said it before. I know Freddie is planning on buying the ball game as well as um, uh, out of the park 24. That's out now too. And I would love to switch up to uh, out of the park, but I, I can't bring myself to do it uh, because it doesn't have consecutive seasons. And that's what I love about this game. Um, it's just hard to play because it's so poorly put together. Mike Higa deserves a serious nod. He had a double and a home run. Rich Rollins had two doubles. And Brew Baker, of course, got the win. So, And he is our player of the game. That's going to do it. Uh, we're going to come back later today and do the uh, Tigers spring training. That should be a lot of fun. I'm actually really looking forward to that. I can't wait to get that uh, season started in a couple of days. I just don't know what to do yet uh, regarding the... Um, uh, baseball mogul 23. So I got I got to chew on that. Uh, until later, everyone have a great day.